In the name of God, hi everyone, welcome back to EKG Land. In this episode, we are going to explain the features of sinus and non-sinus P waves. Let's start our discussion with an EKG strip. This EKG is taken from a 27-year-old male, with no remarkable medical history, presence with weakness. The physical examination is completely normal. An EKG is obtained. What do you think about the strip? Does it need any medical intervention? As usual, to interpret EKG properly, apply the 10-step approach. First step, examine the standard values. As it is clear, the calibration marker is one large box wide, and two large boxes tall. Therefore, this is a standard EKG. Second, determine the heart rhythm. As usual, examine three items to establish the underlying rhythm. 1. Locate and examine P wave morphology. We expect sinus P waves to be upright in D2, D1 and V3 to V6. But here, the P waves are negative in D2, D3, AVF, V3 to V6 and upright in AVR. So, the P waves are originating from atria, not the sinus node. 2. Locate and examine QRS complex morphology. Here, the QRS complexes are uniform. Duration of QRS complexes is less than 100 millisecond, so the complexes are narrow. 3. Describe the relationship between the QRS complexes and P waves, using PQRS ratio and intervals, including RR interval, PP interval, and PR interval. Here, there is a P wave before every QRS complex, so the PQRS ratio is 1. There is no dropped beat. So, the AV node functions properly. On the other hand, the PP interval, RR interval, and PR interval are stable. So, the rhythm is regular. Since the P waves aren't from the sinus node, the underlying heart rhythm is so-called, ectopic atrial rhythm. Third, calculate the heart rate. The RR interval is, approximately 4 large boxes, so heart rate is 75 beats per minute. Fourth step is axis analysis. Here, the QRS complexes are positive in both leads 1 and 2. Therefore, the axis is considered as normal. Next part is the P waves. As we already said, the P waves are originating from the atria, not the sinus node. Remember that, when the P waves aren't sinus, EKG is no longer reliable to identify atrial abnormalities. Sixth step is the PR interval. Here, the PR interval is about three small boxes. Therefore is within normal ranges. Next part is QRS complexes. As usual, examine four items to determine the QRS complex changes. 1. QRS duration. Here, the QRS is narrow, about two small boxes. So, no intraventricular conduction delay is present, and the heart conduction system functions normally. 2. QRS amplitude. As it is clear, the QRS complexes are more than 5 mm in limb leads, and more than 10 mm in precordial leads. So, they are not low voltage. On the other hand, there is no finding in favor of ventricular hypertrophy. In general, the QRS complexes have normal voltage. 3. R wave progression and transition zone. As you see, the transition zone is in V2. So we have early transition that is so-called, counterclockwise rotation. It may be seen as normal variant, posterior MI, RBBB, or RVH. In this tracing, early transition is due to normal variation. 4. The last item in this step is, looking for pathologic Q waves. Here, there is no obvious Q wave in any lead. Therefore, there is no pathologic Q in this strip. In summary, the QRS complexes are generally normal. Next part is examining STT changes. Here, there is no obvious ST elevation or depression. The T waves are positive in all leads except AVR, D3, and V1. As we said in episode number 2, inverted T wave is considered as normal finding in D3. So, there is no abnormal STT changes in this strip. Next part is QT interval. Here, the QT interval is about 8.5 small squares. Therefore, the QT interval is 340 millisecond. Since the heart rate is 75 beats per minute, 
The corrected QT interval according to the Hodges formula is 366 millisecond and therefore is normal. The last part is overall interpretation. Before going through this part, if you have enjoyed this video till now, please subscribe me and ring the bell for further videos. To interpret every EKG strip properly, make a list of abnormal findings. In this strip, the abnormal finding is ectopic atrial rhythm. Let's see what is ectopic atrial rhythm. The hallmark of every ectopic atrial rhythm is the presence of non-sinus P waves. Therefore, it's essential to know normal variation of sinus P waves. P wave is the first wave of electrocardiogram that represents the depolarization of the biatrial chamber. Sinus P waves are always positive in D1, D2, AVF, V3 to V6 and negative in AVR. It has variable morphology in AVL, D3, V1 and V2. The amplitude of sinus P wave is often greater in D2 in comparison to D1. Sinus P wave can be slightly positive, slightly negative, biphasic, or even flat in V1 and V2. It can be positive, negative, or biphasic in D3 and AVL as well. In summary, P wave morphology is variable in D3, AVL, V1 and V2. P wave inversion in inferior leads, or V3 to V6 represents non-sinus origin of the P wave, and is observed in ectopic atrial rhythm. Upright P wave in AVR, is another finding in atrial rhythm. Ectopic atrial rhythm occurs when the dominant pacemaker, is an ectopic focus in the atrium, and not the sinus node. The electrocardiographic features of ectopic atrial rhythm are, 1. Non-sinus P waves. 2. Atrial rate ranges from 40 to 100 beats per minute. 3. PR interval within normal range and most often more than three small squares. 4. Regular, or irregular rhythm. Ectopic atrial rhythm is often transient, and is seen in subjects with, or without structural heart disease. Note that, P wave inversion in inferior leads, like our today tracing, is due to retrograde atrial activation, from a pacemaker focus in the low atrium, and is so called, low atrial rhythm. It can be mistaken as AV junctional rhythm. Remember that, the PR interval in AV junctional rhythm, is less than three small boxes, while the low atrial rhythm has a longer PR interval, most often more than three small squares. Let's go through several examples. In this tracing, the P waves are upright in leads D1, D2, AVF, V3 to V6, and negative in AVR. Therefore, the P waves are sinus. As you see, P wave amplitude in D2 is greater than D1, and is a normal finding in sinus rhythm. They are biphasic in V1 as well. Here, the P waves are inverted in D2, D3, AVF, V4 to V6, and upright in AVR. Therefore, the P waves are non-sinus, and from low atrium. The heart rate is nearly 90 beats per minute. So, this is low atrial rhythm. In this example, as it is clear, this strip is same as the previous one. The P waves are inverted in D2, D3, AVF, V4 to V6, and upright in AVR. Therefore, the P waves are non-sinus and from low atrium. The heart rate is nearly 57 beats per minute. So, this electrocardiogram is low atrial rhythm as well. Again, we re-emphasize that, ectopic atrial rhythm is transient and often a normal finding, especially in symptom-free patients. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe me and ring the bell. Have fun.